The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 and did something last night. Uh, kind of intriguing because I was watching the Caitlin Clark basketball game. The Iowa superstar, she is amazing. She needs to try out for the NBA, or I should say, not try out, but get drafted, go in the NBA draft, not the WNBA draft. Watch that game. And then on the other side of things, I watched a little bit of the the Bachelor finale. Is this the Bachelor theme? This is not the current Bachelor theme. I don't know what this is. Huh, I went in Bachelor theme on my YouTube premium, and this came up. I would say the show doesn't really have a theme song anymore. Well, there's an open, right? I mean, does it open somehow? It opens very short, very dramatically. It does, because I was watching Wheel of Fortune. Next thing you know, I'm seeing a guy crying. <laughs> <laughs> and how was the wheel last night, Kara? It was spectacular. Some guy got an answer with only one letter. Is that right? Yes, it was fascinating. Um, I'm saying I saw that, too, because Wheel of Fortune is Harper's favorite, my daughter's favorite show. That's good. She'll learn how to say words, spell words. It's not working out so great yet. <laughs> She's only a year and a half. Yeah. I think the wheel is so hard. I, I've never been able to solve a puzzle. That is the hardest game show there is. Huh. Harder well, than Jeopardy? I do okay. At, it, well, Jeopardy, it's like when there's a music category yeah, or a yeah. sports category. All right, I'm locked in. Yeah. Well, wheel of Fortune, uh, impossible. It, it's not that hard. I uh, just wait till letters show up until you figure out the words. Uh, yeah, okay. That <laughs> is hard, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hard. It's not that bad. So a lot of, a lot of good TV chilling watching last night. And so cases have been locked into The Bachelor the whole season. And I'm listen, I am a reality show junkie. Uh, I still haven't seen the one with Ronnie, the Jersey Shore vacation last Thursday. I haven't had a chance to catch up on that. I'm a challenge addict. That's my favorite show of all time on MTV, The Challenge. But what do you think of this current challenge season? Because that show for the longest time dominated cable rankings, and now it's way down. The last season was the worst season in its history. Really? And it's almost 40 season history. The last challenge was atrocious. What happened? Wow. What, what because happened? they relied on the newbies and not the veterans to have personality. Mm. And the newbies sucked. They're, they're, <laughs> no, I didn't care about one person on the show. Uh. But I needed CT. I needed Johnny Bananas. I needed Wes. I needed Manny. I needed all these people in my life, and they were gone, uh, Cara Marie. I needed her. And then there, she wasn't there for him, except for little snippets in this season. They came in as a... I'm getting too much in the weeds here, probably on the challenge. <laughs> they came in for a little bit, but it's my favorite show of all time. Looking forward to the new season starting soon, where they bring all the vets back. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm just trying to set the stage of saying that I am in on reality shows. Kara, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I, men I mentioned the other day how much I like when men cry, or I don't hate it, but I did not like it when I saw that guy crying. Last night. You thought he was weak? Well, because it started, that's literally how the show started. <laughs> yeah, he's crying. I, I like, fight, you know, I'm like, I don't know why he's crying, but I'm going to go to bed now. Like, I, <laughs> that's literally what I did. Men <laughs> cry, Kara goes to bed. Not much of an empath, are you, Kara? No. Jesus. So next time, next time you're on a date with Kara, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> she will pass out. So I watched the Bachelor finale last night, not knowing what the hell was going on, and Case, of course, locked into it. So I have some questions about what I saw. There's a guy named Joey. He's uh, the bachelor. He's the bachelor. First, I had to ask my my wife, is he handsome? Yeah. And at first, I said, like, he looks like a guy that wasn't handsome in high school and then found this look, found this perfect look, and he does it every day. And then, because the look is his best look, I call it maybe your getting laid outfit or your getting laid well, look. That, that's what to wear in The Bachelor. That's right. Yeah. And so originally my wife agreed with me, and then she took a look at a different angle, and she goes, no, no, he's handsome. Carol, will you do me a favor? Will you Google Joey the Bachelor and just let us know if you, you think he's handsome? You know well, I saw him crying. You know I, mean, I didn't think he was handsome crying. <laughs> oh, we know you saw him yeah, crying. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him smiling and let us know what you think. All right, Joey the Bachelor. I guess he's like a tennis pro. Uh, he likes tennis. That's really the only yeah. thing I know about him. Yeah. He looks like he's in, um, what's that brother band? The Jonas Brothers. He looks like a Jonas Brother. I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. He kind of looks like a little bit like Kevin, Kevin Jonas. Yeah, but Kevin's really good looking. He doesn't look that much like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, by the way, if you watch this, you can check in at 312-591-8300 and chime in. And then there's two girls left. So it was Joey, and then there's a girl named Daisy and a girl named Kelsey. Yeah. Bo both beautiful. I would agree. I mean, the cast are always beautiful. They're too pretty. Of there course. are some lookers on this season. Yeah. Some lookers? There is a, there are a girl from St. Louis named Autumn I was a huge fan of. What are you, my grandfather? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that dame had some nice <laughs> games. <laughs> <Dame too. laughs> Gams on that dame. Ah, I'll tell you what. I thought there's some very pretty ladies on the show. Well, yeah, they're always pretty, and they're but they're, they're also completely different. These two, in my opinion, of their looks. How so? Explain that to uh, me. So one was a, I guess I'll say shorter, uh, voluptuous blonde. 
<laughs> Feels like Reese Witherspoon. I haven't taken the HR training yet. What can I say yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> Voluptuous uh, is not a negative term, right? No, no it's just a fact. Uh, you know? Well endowed. Yeah, that's fine. She was doing okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then the other girl was uh, taller and uh, longer, darker hair. One was a, bl- the other one was blonde. Nice Daisy gams. was the blonde one. <laughs> nice Ke- gams. Yeah, Kelsey had the nice gams. Yeah. Uh, Daisy's the one with the with the vocal fry. Oh, she can't win then. I hate that. <laughs> oh, talks like this. Well, yeah. Karen, does it make you feel bad if I tell you that she had a cochlear implant? And those, okay, now I feel bad. And, and you should. How about you tell her that sorry. first before she makes a comment <laughs> yeah. like that? Because Kara is all of a sudden here. She's got to make fun of the crying guy oh, and the woman with the vocal fry. Well, you led her to the water. Like, like a horse leads the water, and you let her to it. it. But she didn't have to because she didn't know she had any hearing know. issue. See? Kara, you're fine. Oh, you didn't know. You didn't have all the information. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I thought the same thing, to be honest. Watching it last night, she had that Kardashian vocal fry thing, and it's, it's because of her hearing issue that she had hearing cochlear implants. And That's a perfect reason to have vocal fry. There's plenty of not good reasons people have it. Yeah, she yes. gets yeah. a pass. Now, I, I will say, because Brian only watched the finale, I've watched the entire season. Carrie, you didn't see any of this. The first date that she went on, she had the first one-on-one, because so in The Bachelor, they have group dates and they have one-on-ones. Everybody wants the one-on-one because mm-hmm. it's more intimate. The first one-on-one she went on, they put her in a helicopter with Joey the Bachelor, and Joey at the time was unaware that she had a hearing problem. Ugh. So she just couldn't hear on the helicopter, and that was the basis of the first date. That was the drama that's, for the entire episode. Okay, that's the producers. I that's thought that annoying. Was very mean. I thought that was very mean of them. I've been on a helicopter before. You can't hear. Exactly. Yeah. Bad, well, they did the casting on that one on purpose, too. Yeah. Bad, bad producers. But that's what I enjoy about the show. Well, here's the, the bad thing. producers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he had a choice between two really good looking women. He's a good looking guy. That's kind of how the bachelor goes, mm-hmm. and, and maybe life goes for some people out there, too. So the girl, the blonde. Daisy. Now, should I do the spoiler alert already to say who, I mean, who he picked? Go ahead. I'd like to hear it from your perspective. Okay, so he picked the non blonde, uh, well endowed woman. Kelsey. Kelsey. Picked her. And I could tell right away. I knew what was going on right away because the blonde was definitely very saying, being defensive and saying, I don't want to get committed here because I know he's not going to pick me. Mm. I have that feeling. That's the vibe I got right away. Yes. Mm. The other girl's like, let's party. Walking on sunshine. And a lot of times there's a plot twist. You kind of look for it here like, oh, they're going to lead me, but then he's going to pick the blonde. But I was right early on. I picked that he's going to pick the other girl, and he did. So. You only watched the finale, which means you had that perspective of, as you referred to her, the blonde, her being Daisy. Yeah, I'm sorry if that's offensive. No, it's I haven't okay. taken, it's haven't okay. taken the HR training yet, calling somebody blonde because they have blonde hair. So for most of the season, there were two front runners. There was a girl named Maria who I think you would have liked. She got eliminated. It's a shame you didn't see her because I think you would have loved her. Yeah. The other one was Daisy. And the only way I can explain it to you, Brian, and this will make perfect sense, I think. Okay. Daisy is the Baltimore Ravens. She's a regular season champion. Mm. She had the best record throughout most of The Bachelor. Yes. And then when it came down to hometowns and the fantasy suites, which are essentially The Bachelor playoffs, those are the most important dates there are. Cracked under the pressure. Couldn't hang immediately. Huh. Was outclassed by Kelsey. The girl who ended up winning was not a favorite for most of the season. She was kind of a background player. She was cute. She's maybe someone you'd want to see a few times, but it didn't seem like there was a real connection there. I was trying to say, was she the Buffalo Bills, but they didn't win either. No, she's the Chiefs. She's the Chiefs? She's the Chiefs. Oh. She but, won. But, but the Chiefs are a normal champion. They just, and then no one, everybody counted them out this year. Exactly. And everybody counted Kelsey out. Nobody was expecting her to have the run that she did. But okay. these last few dates, I mean, Brian, I fell in love with this woman. Yeah. She was giggly. She was smart. She was funny. She you, was intuitive. Men like giggly women? I love giggly women. Oh. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. <laughs> Also, I don't know if that's offensive. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know anymore. I don't, a giggly woman, well-endowed, blonde. I don't know. Listen. <laughs> well, I, don't yell him at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think he chose wisely, uh, but now I'm actually, as, as time goes on, I, at the time I thought he chose wisely. Mm-hmm. But now I'm kind of, because now when they bring on the show, it took three hours to get to the freaking answer. Yeah. Just tell me in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Please. I'm the king of teasing. I get that. I understand what they're doing. They want to keep you around. They look cute together. But but see, when they when they came out at the end after they announced it, yeah. then I liked the blonde better. Daisy. I liked Daisy better. Really? Yeah. After what, what, what do you think changed? I think because she's deeper. I think I think I felt more like that that's a real relationship, and the other one you're going to have fun with. You have a good, you just have a good time. You know, and eventually when the, the woo ends... <laughs> She was a bit of a woo girl, wasn't she? She's she? a woo girl. When the woo ends, you can't just keep, you know, woos eventually end. 
Wow. That's dark to think about. Wow. That's a good takeaway for today. Sorry. Woos <laughs> eventually end. Uh, but I think I think the long term is Daisy, I think, is more longer term. That's my, that my judgment just watching the finale only. Well, the crazy thing is Daisy had a shot to be the Bachelorette. They offered that position to her, and she yeah. turned it down. See, this Why? makes me like Daisy. Yeah. No, I think you would have. She was a bit... Uh, I don't want to say pick me because that's normally an offensive term, but she was a bit not like the other girls. Yeah. I think she was playing a different game than the rest of them. Kelly checked in at 219. I don't understand these beautiful people that have to go on a show in order to find a mate. I'm not beautiful and still found a mate. I don't get it. <laughs> Friggin' drama queens. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, but if you're beautiful, don't you want the whole entire world to see? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they, they have ulterior motives. Yeah, exactly. They, they have ulterior motives in wanting to be either an actor or actress or whatever. It'd be funny if there was a Bachelor season where everybody was just like a, like fives and sixes. Yes. Like a very average-looking season. Well, they did the Golden Bachelor. I liked that one, actually. Yes. I didn't watch it very much. Yeah. It's, you know, but I, I like the concept of it. Is there not a ugly Bachelor-type show? There's not a show called love The is, Ugly there's Bachelor. There's love, love is Blind, isn't that where you don't see each other, but they're still good looking? That is. That's if true. You, what's they, that show where they're naked? Because I've watched that on Netflix. Um, I believe that's Naked and Afraid. No, no, no. No, no. That's, that's a different show where they show too much man ass. Yeah. And Naked and Afraid. No, but the, the the one I'm thinking of, they're not necessarily the best looking people. You're right. It was a British show, I think. Yeah. But it was on yeah, Netflix. Right. Did they show Full Frontal on that? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Close ups. Like, it's disturbing to watch. It's like a gaper's delay. I couldn't stop looking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, 809. And Lollapalooza and Q101 dropped the daily lineups. You already know who the bands were. We have all that information up at Q101.com and, of course, all on our socials. Uh, but now you know which day is going to be what. So Thursday, you've got Hozier uh, headlining that night. Uh, Friday, you'll have um, SZA and Stray Kids be headlining that night. Also, Tower the Creators on Thursday as well as a headliner. And then you got the Killers on Saturday with Future Edge, X and Metro Boomin. And then Sunday, Blink-182 and Melanie Martinez. Skrillex is going to be on Saturday night as well. Um I imagine they kind of put him separate in the lineup. Does that mean he's going to be kind of DJing between other artists or he's doing his own set in yeah, that Perry stage? I would imagine he's at the Perry stage. Okay. And oh, normally they so just don't fun. have a headliner listed there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skrillex seems, I, I mean, that's going to get outrageous. It is. Um, They're going to need a lot more room at Perry stage. Yeah. For that. They always shove it over in that kind of corner. Yeah. And I shouldn't say a corner. I mean, Grant Park's pretty big. It's a pretty big field. It seems like an area that needs more space for when the electronic people come well, out yeah, there and do their thing. yeah, because they're dancing. Yeah. I don't dance, so it doesn't. I just kind of walk by and I, I kind of blend in so people think I'm part of that crowd. <laughs> I, I'm always so jarred. Like, I love Lala because I feel like I'm around a different type of person that I normally am. Like, it brings, you know, obviously it brings a lot of Q101 listeners, but it brings a more gin pop, like, hey, I'm an average Joe kind of guy that even Riot Fest doesn't. When I walk by Perry stage and it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and the sun is beating down on everybody and there's still kids raving as hard as humanly possible, I'm never prepared for it. I'm never in that mindset. I can never match their energy. Well, I always felt that way going to Lala, even the first one. I mean, when, you, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you go back 30 years ago, I mean, the first lineup had Jane's Addiction, Living Color, Nine Inch Nails, Ice T, and Body Count. Not nice. bad. Uh, Rollins Band, the Butthole Surfers. And I still tried to fit in with that crowd. Yeah, the Rollins Band crowd is not the Brian crowd. Well, the thing is, I love Rollins. I, I love do. Henry Rollins. I, I do, too. Yeah, and I've seen too. him many times, but I don't look like I belong in that crowd. No, you do not. No. <laughs> I don't, I don't take my shirt off. I'm not jacked. I'm not pushing people over. I'm not tatted up. Did you, did you fit in more with the body count crowd? Was that uh, your I, group I, there? I blended right in. <laughs> <laughs> with ice, ice tea and body they count. They saw Brian and said he's one of us. <laughs> I love that band, by the way. So you, it's amazing to go back that 30 years of Lollapalooza and yeah. what it is and what it is today. Um, so, yeah, uh, so Saturday and Sunday nights, you got the Killers and then Blink. I mean, you got the Deftones also on Saturday night with the Killers. 
And then uh, Bridget calls me baby. Our guys, our local boys, when are they playing case? Saturday, I yeah, think. Yeah, they're playing Saturday night as well. Wait, Saturday. Saturday's going to be crazy. Saturday's rocking. Yeah, so when they do the single day tickets, I think that is probably the strongest Q101 lineup there is between the Killers and the Deftones and Bridget Calls Me Baby, among others. I mean, you got Hippo Campus there as well, Ethel, Ethel Kane, Boy With Uke. Those are all Q101 artists, and that is Saturday night, uh, Grant Park. My nephews love Boy With Uke. Yeah, that dude's cool. They, they, they love. They, they, he opened up for uh, AJR, I believe, on the tour maybe a year ago. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, yeah, there's Lala. Of course, the four-day uh, general mission ticket prices. Uh, get them. Uh, Q101.com has the information. So, going to be a busy August. That's August 1st to the 4th. That starts everything off. Uh, that next weekend, you got Metallica at Soldier Field. Uh -huh. And that Tuesday, you've got Smashing Pumpkins and Green Day. And then that Wednesday, you've got Cage the Elephant. Oh. Holy crap. And I know Bush is in that month as well. And then near the end, of course, you've got Pearl Jam and Wrigley Field two shows. August Man. is going, is, what it's called is like a money drain. Yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, you stay here for the free tickets. Like, for example, the Cubs opening day broadcast we have coming up on Monday. We'll have some tickets for some of these shows um, uh, over there at Almost Home, Q101.com. And uh, sponsored by our great friends there at Twisted Tea. But, yeah, August is going to be, I'm not going to be home and this is like last year I had a harder time with Harper being under one years old, but now we can get babysitters. Like mm -hmm. I feel, I finally feel comfortable with leaving her. You know, she's with somebody. free to take to Lala. That's what I was going to say. Take yeah. your baby to Lala. I took my little Sam. He saw Rage Against the Machine when he was three. That's is good that parenting. right? Yep. <laughs> See, I know someone, there's that kids area, right? Yeah. And I know someone that took their kid to Lala. Uh -huh. and, and kids area is fun. And I guess you can get a stroller in there. Yep. And which is nice to have all your stuff. You can right. just push it around. I know. And then they got ridiculed. When they had the kid in there with headphones on, by the way, blocking the sound. And someone said, who brought a baby to Lollapalooza? <laughs> and this, this girl I know never got over that. She oh, never geez. got over that. Who brought the baby to Lala? I, just think about it. We could be uh, hanging out with Chino from the Deftones and your yeah. baby could be there. Huh. I have video of Sam <laughs> dancing to Toad the Wet Sprocket. And pe <laughs> people were coming up like really wasted people. Man, that's cool. Can I shake your hand? So he, had, he learned... <laughs> He learned a lot of stuff about life. That's a cool baby, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Well, we're just talking about the Lala lineup that dropped, and there's so many shows coming up this summer. We're getting there. And how about Stone Double Pilots and Live? You and a friend get to go to Northern Island for that show from our great friends at Live Nation. That's not in August. That's in September. That show September 11th. If you can figure out this song scramble. These songs are in reverse. <laughs> I hope they play other songs backwards oh, at the show. Yeah. I am the devil. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's three songs there. 312-591-8300. Three, three from either Stone Double Pilots or Live. Can you tell me what songs are in that? And you're going. One more time. Three one two five nine one eighty three hundred. Figure it out. And you got it, and you're going from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and a classic song scramble. We reverse the songs. You can figure them out. If no one gets it right now, everybody's got a shot at these STP live tickets for Northern Island, which I'm going to be at that show on September 11th from Live Nation. Can you figure it out? <laughs> It's so hard. I know. Nick's checking in from Crestwood. Um, I'm sorry, Nick's in Chicago. Uh, Nick, give it to me and let's end this thing. Go ahead. Got I Alone by Live. Yes. Big B and Flush, both by STP. Say, say the last two again. I didn't hear your, the both STPs. Oh, you got uh, Big Empty yes. and Flush by Stone Temple Pilot. Jesus, is that it? Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, nice job. You're going to the show. Are you there, buddy? 
Hello? He's so excited. He, he already left <laughs> to go to the show. <laughs> Congratulations, man. You are there from Brian and Kenzie and Q101. In the meantime, let's move forward with uh, Gil Curtis's headlines. This is not headline news. The CEO of Boeing will step down. I'm sure I speak for every flyer when I say, don't let the detached cabin door hit you on the way out. Today is National Wear a Hat Day. Done and done, replied insufferable hipsters as they bought a tiny fedora. Steven Tyler turns 76 today. He's working on two new songs, Love on an Acorn Stairlift and Dude Looks Like an Old Lady. Bob Barker's estate is hitting the market, which is a totally missed opportunity. Imagine if they would have given it away on a showcase showdown. And Tennessee passed a law protecting musicians from AI. It bans songwriting software from using the words beer, truck, or blue jeans. This is not headline news. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101.